are back with Project Independence and you. We are officially in the Talk of the Town segment where it is just uh, me and Otto today. And uh, we just had an amazing, amazing interview, which I knew is we were, I was really like waiting for this week. You know, I've had it in the books for so long and it's such a topic that I find so interesting. So it's just another big thank you to Dr. Seymour Huberfeld over at Northwell, um, who is just so knowledgeable talking about sleep. And you know what? I felt good, you know, that he expressed that he is not the prime picture of, you know, optimal sleep health. Um, which made me feel good because I was like, all right, you know, if he's struggling, it's it's okay that, you know, it's not my strongest suit. Um, well, my opinion is I think a big thing for me with any doctor is the ability to be able to talk with them comfortably. Mm-hmm. And you could talk with Dr. Huberfell very comfortably about sleep. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good thing. And unless he gave us some laughter along the way. And that's, you know, <laughs> that's my favorite. I think that's always the best kind of topic, you know. Well, it's a serious problem. <clears throat> Yeah. But sometimes you have to take it life in general uh-huh. <laughs> a little lighter. Uh, you know, but it is a serious problem. No, but it's could... just, you know, and that quote that I had, you know, mentioned about just, you know, how important, you know, sleeping is literally the only time your body can repair and kind of catch up. And you know, I was in the article was just so complex and just saying all the things that kind of go on while you're sleeping, you know, and because I even I've been guilty, like, oh, you know, I have so much to do. I can't waste time, you know, so it's just look at like at this thing like, oh, you know, I have to do this thing because, you know, I have to. But I have 10,000 other things, you know, I need to be doing right now. And it's um, it's interesting and it's complicated. It's something that I, I, you know, I'll i try to actively work on, you know, and and with the cell phone, you know, I use my cell phone as my alarm, you know, my backup alarm. And. You know, but it is, it is that fine line, you know, and that's why I had to laugh when he said, you know, but when you pick up the phone, it's, oh, I got this text message. Oh, I got that. You know, it's, it's your brain just starts getting sucked into that world. So it's something that, you know, and I forgot, you, I learned it on this show and I can't remember what guest talked about it, but it was certainly something, um, it might've been like a mindfulness kind of thing. And you know what? It might've been John Ryan's um, son-in-law who we had on once who was saying, you know, in, in the, the morning, gym. like just wake up. Yeah. And, and just, you know, give yourself five minutes of not touching that phone and looking at it, like just to wake up, get yourself acclimated. And it's something that I actively work on because listen, let me tell you, there are more days that I would wake up and immediately grab the phone. It was just, my brain went to like, okay, let me check on that. Plus it's also part of my, you know, trying to just prepare myself for the day and make sure there aren't any you know, crazy alarming text messages. You know, I am the child of my mom who, you know, it's like you're always waiting for like the other shoe to drop. Um, now, when somewhere. I do my my thing, when I wake up and uh, send myself an email, I do have the ability not to look at other emails. That's good. But, that, right? you know, I think so- it's, and that's what's really struck me about the interview we did is that, you know, so much of like this whole sleep world is habit based. You know, so if you start getting into the groove of things, you know, and making that your habit, you know, it really, so you have to just strive to make good habits. I mean, we certainly make enough bad habits, you know, around, you know, the sleep um, cycle. And it just, and I really had to laugh too, because I think we all can relate to the fact that we think our body is like a car and we're like, okay, it's 11 o'clock, shut it, shut it off. I got to go to bed and boom, like I should instantly fall asleep. And that's, you know, not how it works, you know? So I think that's what I, you know, the one of the golden nuggets I really took away is you need to have that period of time where you have downtime, you know, and it's it's certainly just to kind of, you know, and that's why I think people read before bed or, you know, whatever your kind of thing is to, to get um, acclimated for that. So. Well, if I look back in my life, I mean, I used to travel a fair amount with business and you, you have a meeting and you have a meeting that lasts till seven o'clock and then you go back to your hotel for 20 minutes. And then you meet down at the bar and then you have dinner and then you go up to your room at 1030 for a meeting the next day at eight o'clock. So, you know, you're going through this whole rat race, if you will. Yeah, uh, I know it's, it's and, hard, and, you know, and, you know uh, and I think about myself, you know, and this is it's not a new thing. You know, it's just how it's always been is that, you know, I very much like to do things at nighttime. Right. Like so when at the house is quiet. You know, I have time to myself. You know, I work all day. So having that time, you know, when it's late and everyone's sleeping and I could kind of do, you know, the stuff that I need to do. And half of it is, you know, my 
crafting or, you know, I'll randomly get in the whim of organizing. I mean, no one knows where Christina's night will take her. Um, but it's something, you know, so it's very hard for me to, you know, be like, okay, no, you're going to bed this time. Like, I go to bed very late every day. But I think a lot of that is I've trained my body. And that's why I had asked that question, you know, like, I just, I, I feel sometimes if I get too much sleep, I'm extra tired. You know, so I don't know if that's psychological or, you know, or what it is, but it's interesting. Well, I find, um, I think you go through stages in your life mm-hmm. and, that, and I'm not talking about over your whole mm-hmm. life. I'm talking about within a week or whatever, you get spurts of energy during certain times where like, if I'm working on projects, which, you know, I, I mm-hmm. work on projects and if you're working on a project, and you all of a sudden get that spurt of energy that you can really get your mind right. focused on it. Yeah. You go at it. And yeah. then there are other times where you say, you know, I don't really feel like doing this. Yeah, I'm with you. you. Know? I get it. I yeah. do. No, that, how does that happen? I mean, you know, it's just, that's how the body works. It's a complicated body. You know, when you think yeah. anytime we have these doctors on, you know, we've dealt with so many different, you know, components of the body on the show and medical things and, you know, every time we do that, I, I, it just, it, I always look back, like the body is so complicated. <laughs> you know, there's so much at play. There's so much interconnected things going on, you know, and I just think it's, um, well, we've talked about this before the body's exhibit that existed in New York a number of years ago. Uh-huh. Um, and I think I'm, I'm making the number up, but I'm thinking I'm pretty close. There's like a million miles of nerves in the human body. Now, how can any one person know all about that whole million miles? You know, you can't. Uh, it's a we we, crazy we are, are walking around in the most amazing computer on the planet. It's really uh, true. You know, you, but you, I have to say, Otto, I was very happy and I was laughing because this is why I believe the two of us are quite in sync sometimes because I had, you know, a paper next to me where I was right jotting down, you know, keywords of things that I wanted to get to. And uh, number one on my list was naps. Because we both have talked about this before. I love a good nap, you know, and I, I do think um, I'm on the computer most of my day, you know, at work. And it's just, you know, so and, and I try to actively, you know, in more recent times, like just stop, get up and move around just to get, you know, because if I'm in the zone and I have like a busy day, I mean, there'll be days I go by and that I'm just zeroed in on this, you know, computer and I'm eating at my dad. You know, it's like everything is just happening in front of this screen. And I do feel, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you just feel tired and it's mostly like your eyes are tired and just from staring at this screen, you know, all day. Thank the Lord at this point in life, I don't have any kind of vision things going on, you know, but it, it's just, I, it's eye fatigue of just, you know, staring at this light, you know, and you don't even like realize. You know, that's that. an interesting point you bring up. Mm-hmm. I wonder, it's too bad the doctor's not on mm-hmm. now. If there's a correlation between the kind of work that people do and sleep problems, yeah. uh, like if you work on a farm mm-hmm. and you're working physically all day, I believe you're going to be physically exhausted. Well, you it, you know, it's funny that you say this because this is like my husband and I, and we talk about this all the time because Jay is uh, the supervisor of the Nassau BOCES grounds department, you know, shout out BOCES. Um, so, and he, you know, for many years prior to that, you know, also was doing landscaping, his head, a landscape design company also, you know, in conjunction with it. So all day long, you know, no matter what the weather is, he was physical, you know, and it's great. It's unfortunate because he always comes back, you know, we laugh because he always just comes back, you know, t- glowing skin and like skinny, you know, I said, we should all like, just go work with Jay for a day. But he, you know, he's tired in that way. So physically, you know, his body hurts. He is just like exhausted with that. You know, and then I always say to him, I feel mentally exhausted, you know, when I come home from work. I just feel like, you know, and especially if it was like a busy day, it's like your brain and your head. So like it's in this region, you're just exhausted. That would have been a good question for Dr. Uber. Yeah. Physical tiredness and mental tiredness. Yeah. I think that I said to my, I was like, I was like, Jay, I was like, I think they correlate on the same level. You know, it's just um, like, it's just two different ways of being. Well, it's a very interesting question. It is. You know, how, how does it, um, like people, many people in this day and age work all day on a computer. Yeah. 
their home, wherever they are. Think about what? that. I mean, I think about the time, and it's, it's terrifying sometimes when I've looked at like my cell phone because, you know, so you're doing all this work on the computer. Then you have to do stuff on your cell phone. You know, you're constantly connected in one way or in another, you know, so and like just the light, you know, and I think it made me think about it recently because, you know, my mom's been having some little health stuff she's been dealing with. Um, and the other day, you know, she was having her eye, you know, her eye, she had to go to the eye doctor because she was seeing like wavy um, lines in her peripheral. So of course she's my mom and she goes to like, you know, her retina is it's completely split and falling off, you know, so there's full panic, <laughs> you know, occurs. So she went, we got her doctor's appointment and, you know, so much of it too is just, you know, she's got light eyes. So the light that emits, you know, the blue light, you know, you'll see all these things now, you know, the blue light glasses and stuff that come from your cell phone and the computer. And, and that day, you know, she's still working, my mom, and she was saying she was just on the computer, you know, all day long, like without a break, you know, so I feel like that has so much, you know, and so it makes me so conscious, you know, of it. So what both of us did on our phones is lower the bright, you know, dim the brightness. So our computers and our phone, we dim that light, um, you know, and yes, it's harder to see, but I feel like if you need to, then you can make it go up, you know, but just constantly having that on you, you know, it has to have an impact and you don't even think about it sometimes because you're like, you know, that's just life. You know, I'm running around, I'm checking my emails, you know, this one's texting me, you know, so it's this constant, you know, connectivity that goes on. That's Well, I, I know some seniors, frankly, that uh, watch TV for the better part of the day. Yeah. Is that comparable to working on a computer all day? You yeah, know? I, you know, probably to a certain extent, I think the computer is worse because, you know, with a TV, listen, I have like a TV usually going in my house, but that doesn't mean I'm actually seated in front of the TV. You know, I'm running around, I'm grabbing something from here, you know, so you're not really just staring straight. I think with a computer, you know, you're typing and you're staying, you know, so it's like, you're just like you're laser focused. focused. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that really, because I do feel, and I wonder sometimes, that's why I kept bringing up about habits. Because, you know, I feel like, you know, I, when I come home from work, I'm like, just give me, give me 15 minutes, a half hour. Just give me that. And I'll knock out. I will like conk out like clockwork, like easy. And I, and I wake up and I'm like new Christina. She's like, you know, rejuvenated. Like I'm ready to take on the world. I'll cook dinner. You know, I'll do, I'll do whatever I need to do. But I feel like I've trained my body now to like, kind of like have to do that. You know, and I'm like, oh, no, like, like, and, and if you don't, like, you certainly feel it. And you're like, oh, I just like want to get that like 30 minutes. And because my husband will laugh at me, he's like, what do you, why don't you just go to sleep earlier? I was like, because I just need like this boost. And like, then I just go off. I'm, I'm the same way. I, and I've always been like that. Yeah, me too. I, young guy. I used to take the subway to work and believe it or not, on the way home, I could sit if I got a seat yeah. and sit and take a nap. And mm -hmm. I remember the trick used to be relax your eyes i'd rub the top of my eyes and try to relax my eyes and it didn't take very long like for that. me to conk out yeah. i mean conk out i mean <laughs> solidly conk out. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's impressive. but i was always the kid even when i was little, like it was a running joke like i would just pass out like everywhere you know and my parents <laughs> would laugh about it. they go we t you know they take me to disney you know, and they bring me to this restaurant and listen, I had expensive taste that age and I would order like a steak and like, I would order something crazy inevitably. And I would be like passed out, like just, and then in car rides, like we were left because we would always drive down South. And my dad still jokes about it to this day because he would be like, you know, I'd wake up and be like, oh my God, we're here already. You know, he's like, he's like you know, 12 <laughs> hours later, he's like, and Christina missed like the whole, you know, road trip and just thinks like, it's just so easy driving to, you know, North Carolina. But I do think, you know, and that's what he had touched upon the doctor, you know, that certain people, it's not all uniform. You know what I mean? Like, no. I think the fact that like me and you do feel a benefit. And I think that that's really, because there are times that like the nap has gone on too long and you wake up feeling like more tired, you know? Well, that I is, actually set a, a timer on my phone yeah. for like 20 minutes because mm -hmm. I don't want to go beyond that. No, because if you do, you feel like, oh, you know. And yeah, but I've there are times it. where, okay, I shut the alarm off, but I still, you know, give it another go. Oh, yeah. Please, <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm the queen of the snooze. 
Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, and I think that that's why it's so important to, if you are experiencing, you know, severe interruptions or difficulty to, you know, make an appointment with a doctor to go over this stuff because it's a, we're complicated people, but we are at the end of our first segment of talk of the town. We will be right back with project independence and you community talk radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be back. WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web, check out the lineup, subscribe to podcasts, and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing. And find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. And welcome back to Project Independence and You Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We are in the middle of Talk of the Town talking all about, uh, we were just doing a little recap of sleep because as you know, we could certainly go, definitely going to have to have Dr. Huberfeld back on to discuss that. But Otto, I want to give a little overview of what is to come on our fabulous show. So next week, We have my other favorite topic, um, which is spring cleaning. Um, So that will be Barbara Feldman will be on next week and she will be uh, diving into that. We're going to play like a little game centered around it. So that should be, um, you know, a great segment as always. Then we have coming up um, also in April, we have um, Greg Balbera, who is going to discuss developing a care plan and helping resistant seniors to accept care. Um, which I think is, we all could know someone, Otto, that this uh, topic can certainly help. Um, And then on April 15th, we have some repeated shows. Um, And then April 22nd, we have a very interesting kind of panel discussion. We're going to have on Julie Wexler, who is from the Bristol Assisted Living, Robin Marks, who is the Executive Director and CEO of the Alzheimer's Disease Resource Center. And then we have Taylor Graff, who is um, from the Sid Jacobson JCC. So they are all going to be on to discuss finding Alzheimer's and dementia care in our community at every stage. So that should be uh, certainly informative. Um, And then April 29th, we have a jam-packed show. We have Eileen Karina, who is the president over at the Patient Safety Advocate Pull Center. Um, we've had them on before, and it's really, they do wonderful work in the realm of advocacy. So she'll be on. And then we have a bonus guest because we also have the first appearance on our show by Supervisor Jennifer DeSena, which is very exciting. So she will be on to kind of give a recap of her state of the town, um, which is good, great. So, and I just want to remind people the state of the town is on Thursday, March 31st. Um, it's going to be at 1145 is the lunch. So if you want to partake in the lunch, you know, there's a, a fee. You can call 311 or 516-869-6011 if you want to be a part of that. Or if you want to just come and view the state of the town address, that's at 115. Um, and there's no charge for that. And you could also live stream it on North Hempstead's website. Um, so it is lunch. It's going to be at the clubhouse at Harbor Links. Um, that's over in Port Washington. For more information, just give 311 a call. Um, but it's all, all good stuff. Um, and then, Otto, on top of our April shows, uh, I f- finished booking this week May shows. So on May 6th, we have our first international guest, Carrie Jean um, Ekins, who is the CEO and founder of Drums Alive, which is the um, organization that Otto stumbled upon in Newsday and we tracked him down. So she will be live streaming with us from Germany. um, And she's just gonna discuss the physical, mental, and emotional benefits of the Drums Alive program. And let me tell you, her, her story is absolutely incredible about how this kind of came to be um and it's just it's gonna be great she's lovely and bubbly so it should be a wonderful interview then on may 13th we're gonna have on um sharnora simon who is from the heller helen keller services um so it's a lot of services for the blind they even do some services for the deaf as well so it's a wonderful um, organization i really just want to showcase that and then on may 20th which i'm also very excited about because i have on 
um, general security. Uh, there's going to be the director of sales over there and then the installation coordinator who is Amanda Spratt, who I have to say, which I'm very excited, is my best friend, um, my soon-to-be sister-in-law. Um, oh, she, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I'm really excited for that. She is my partner in Crime Auto. I'm sure you've seen um, Amanda. I think I met Amanda. At, you have uh, met Amanda. Your grandfather's... Uh... <clears throat> yes, she is my brother's fiance, but more importantly, she's my best friend. Um, and I'm really excited for this because, you know, as everyone knows, I talk about the radio show to anyone with a willing ear to listen. So all my friends are constantly, um, you know, inundated with my radio stories and tidbits and, you know, now, that's thought, an interesting thing. Now, Amanda must know your brother for a long time. So she's known, yeah, she's known my brother. Um, well, she's, you know, she's obviously my brother is younger than me. So, and Amanda is, you know, we have uh, like a six year age difference. But they knew each other as like teens um, and they briefly and then they rekindled, you know, their romance um, in 2013. So she's been, uh, you know, part of our family since then. And she is, uh, you know, just the best. But she will be on because we were discussing what her company um, is very involved in wellness safety technology. Um, and, you know, clearly that's our realm. You know, Otto, we talk about this all the time, and this is just another kind of example of doing that. So I'm really excited to learn about the different technologies that they see and have dealt with. Um, so that will be on May 20th. And then on May 27th, we are going to have on the Transition Network of Long Island, which is a really interesting um, group. Barbara Melman, who is our technology for the terrified instructor, is part of this organization and brought it to my intention. Um, because they are, it's a group of women, and there's a, it's a large group, um, who are just in that transition phase, you know, of working and then retiring and still wanting to be active. So it should be very interesting to kind of learn about how they, um, you know, how they do all this. We're so that is our Jeff transition. Hockey. What'd you say, Adam? We're always in transition. That's we are always in transition. Throughout life. It's certainly true. I mean, yeah. listen, you're dealing with me throughout the week, you know, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> there's really great topics. And I want to tell everyone, if um, depending on how you're, you know, what listening to us or watching us, you know, what it might be. But if you are listening to us, you can also watch us on North Hempstead TV and um, North Shore TV, but on North Hempstead TV. It is Cablevision Channel 18 or 65. That's a, a new change. And then Verizon Channel 46. Or you could always catch us on YouTube, um, which is the WCWP Studio page. Um, and that's just a great way to go over videos. And, and Otto, I have to share with you, which was so exciting, was that the past um, two, I think it was just this week, I received a call from a woman who, you know, caught North Hempstead TV and wanted more information. And, you know, I talk about all on the show, what I'm finding since we've been on North Hempstead TV, a lot of the calls I've been getting are regarding, um, you know, are from not from seniors. You know, it's a lot of caregivers um, and their parent may or may not live in North Hempstead and, you know, they just want resources, you know, so I get you. So and it's really it's just so nice, like the world that has opened up to this. And then I have to laugh because on top of that, I received two messages on social media um, from people I went to high school with that were <laughs> were either at, you know, their parents' house or, you know, flipping through the channels. And then they see, they, they're like, I saw you on TV. I was like, wait, I was flipping through the channels and I had to go back and I was like, is that Christina? <laughs> so, you know, it's nice that... People are flipping that. I think I'm just shocking, you know, my uh, my graduating well, class. Well, I had one last week, actually. I don't get the calls like you get, but mm -hmm. uh, I did have one. Mm -hmm. uh, this group that I walk uh, on Sunday mornings yes. at Jones Beach, mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the, their mothers who I've known since she's born, basically, is in a rehab place in Belmore. And she saw me on television in Belmore, which really? is not part of North Hempstead. So I was curious. And she doesn't know, you know, what channel or anything, but she saw me on TV, in wow. Belmont, which struck me as, uh, how did that happen? You know? I don't know. You know what? I, I have like to, I'm going to check at my, you know, I, I checked many, like, um, months ago on my home 
television stuff, and it didn't come up. But listen, they might. We're just taking over. Out of watch out, Long on. We are just yeah, going, <laughs> we are just traveling all over. But it's really great, you know, to have this, um, you know, connection, and you know, on top of the radio show, our pioneer has hit, and the amount of calls that I've received. <coughs> excuse me. Um, the past week. Um, and I like, you know, cause I was laughing cause Paul's like, who should I give these calls? to? I was like, just give them to me because I like to keep track of all the calls that are coming in regarding it. Cause you know, I'm, I'm a number girl. Um, and the amount of vial of lights and circle of support requests, because we put little page in our pioneer newsletter saying, if you're interested to call, um, has just been flowing. And I've just been sending out packets. There's like over 50 something now, like, and that was just in the past week, um, of people. Just a comment on Vial of Life, okay? I actually completed Vial of Life for my wife and myself. And I will say that um, I encourage people to add a supplemental page to Mm -hmm. that Vial of Life. Uh, It gives a very good overview, Mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of room on there for medications or things like that. So don't feel uh, like you've got to stick with that form. Absolutely. You can add and they pages. even encourage you to put, you know, the nurse and social worker with Project Independence even encourage you to put, you know, um, any kind of advanced directive thing in there. You know, it's a great place to kind of have everything. And you know, it's a decent size bag. It's not too cumbersome, um, you know, or too small for that matter. And you could put everything in there, you know, and just to have it all in one place. And it's just we, um, we've done that, actually. Yeah, oh, good. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's just I, I just like that, you know, and the fact that you know, by having that decal on your door, you know, just notifies, you know, whoever it might be that that's coming in. It's just great to be receiving all these calls because it's showing that people are really reading the pioneer. Um, you know, and I have to, you know, I gave a, a copy to my mom and she was reading it at work yesterday and sent me a message about how much she enjoyed it. Um, I know she's a little biased, you know, because I'm her daughter, but she was saying, you well, know, I, I think there's, it's uh, the last edition, particularly in all of them, frankly, mm-hmm. that there's a lot of meat in there. Yeah. It's not fluff. Yes. You know, there's some solid information and you can disregard it or maybe it'll help you. Yeah. You and know. it's just something. Um, and Otto, you will also be happy. You know, I've been receiving a lot of calls, obviously, for the hard copy version of the circle of support. But. I did yesterday get a call for the digital copy. So oh, um, okay. <laughs> I know you were waiting to hear. So I, I, could, I couldn't wait to tell you um, about the uh, digital copy request. Well, I, I haven't gotten to finish my digital copy yet, but I'm working on it. But that's okay because it's just an ongoing thing. So that yeah. um, is, and I want to remind people, if you are not receiving the Pioneer e- newsletter, and I wa- also want people to know it only comes out about two or three times a year also. Um, so I think there's a lot of people who call see, I'm not getting it, but then I'll, I'll check the mailing list and I see they are. So I think they just think that it's coming out, you know, more often than it is. Um, but you can call 311 or 516-869-6311. And I will make sure if you're not on the list, you'll get on the list. Um, and also I want to encourage people that if you have, you know, access to an email address, you could join our email newsletter and that comes out every month. Um, and it has tons of information about everything that's coming up in Project Independence and outside of, uh, you know, just town-wide kind of things, too. So I encourage people to sign up for that um, as well. And, Otto, we have um, the Shed the Meds program. You know, this is something that I might um, have to see if I'm able to go in, even though I'm not a North Hempstead resident, because I was helping my mom clean out her cabinets um, the other day. And I was going Give through and I said... Huh? <laughs> Give me your meds. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I'll, I'll have the, you know, I don't, there's a lot. And I said to my mom, I said, what are we doing with all these expired meds? Um, you know, and there was meds when she had her, her cat, you know, that had a, there was, there was just so many meds. Um, so it's really, and we want to obviously get rid of it properly. So what's the date on that one? This is Saturday, April 9th at North Hempstead, the town hall parking lot. Now, Town Hall is right on Plandom Road in Manhasset, and that is going to be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, Shed the Meds is a pharmaceutical drop-off event where you could safe, safely dispose of unwanted and expired medication. Um, and let me just give you a little overview of things that are accepted. Um, prescription, prescription patches, 
prescription meds, ointments, over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, sample medications, and medications for pets, as I had just mentioned, um, non-accepted items. So they're not taking any kind of needle or sharp or aerosols or thermometers, um, hydrogen peroxide inhalers, biohazards, waste. Um, so none of those things. You could obviously call through on one to ask specifics, but... Um, I just think these programs are so wonderful, you know, and this is a whole collaboration between the town, um, Nassau County, the Nassau County Police Department. So I really like that it's a collaborative um, effort. So the next one that is coming up is, as I said, April 9th, um, between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. over at North Hempstead Town Hall parking lot. So, Well, I just did the one that was about a week ago, Saturday, I guess, in North Hempstead. The stop program? Yeah, I did the stop program. Great. The only thing I had was shredding. And we've talked mm -hmm. about this. I have a pail, basically, mm -hmm. where if I think it needs to be shredded, I throw it in there. And whenever they do this, I go over there with a pile like that, and they shred it. Now, um, Otto, so you just drive up to your, since you only had shredding, is that what you did? You just drove up to, like, the shredding area? Yes. When you enter the park, they ask you what you have. Mm -hmm. So if you have shredding or clothing for brothers and sisters or whatever mm -hmm. it's called, um, they stay you to the right and then you dump that stuff and then you can leave. Mm -hmm. If you have additional electronics or other things to be disposed of, then you go back to the line, you know, you go right into the line mm -hmm. uh, and dump that stuff. This time around, I only had the shredding, um, yeah. yeah, but it's just, it's so wonderful and efficient. And, you know, and listen, I, t I tell you, we talk about that. It always comes back to this. It's just, it's a good feeling to kind of declutter and get rid of those things, you know, and safely, you know, which is a huge component of it. And, and, and I just love about this dot program, how they have, you know, big brothers, big sisters, Long Island there. And I also want to mention about big brothers, big sisters, because I could speak from personal experience. Um, I always donate to them. Um, clothes uh, mostly, but there's other things that I've donated in the past. And it's just, it's great because you schedule an appointment, they come and pick it up from your house. You know, you just have your bag, you know, out front by your door, you put a sign on it, they'll come and pick it up. Um, and it's just really, it, it's just like a nice and easy process. You know, I did that a lot, you know, <clears throat> over COVID when I was going through stuff and um, it's very convenient. I think it's a great thing, too, for seniors, you know, who just can't necessarily get out and donate it. So, you know, you could just schedule this appointment and they take all kinds of things um, through that as well. So they wow. were on once a while ago. Now. Yes. And there was a young lady, young girl who was on who was I forget the right terminology. Yeah. So um, they that they also <clears throat> do a mentoring program. Right, that's what so she that was doing. on top of you know obviously this you know big brothers big sisters does so much wonderful work and there was a mentoring um, program where they have a volunteer kind of matched you know with a a, a teenager um, and uh, it's just the, those relationships were that was one of my favorite you know the the yeah, relationship that whole, bonded from for that years great, yeah. Yeah. so all good stuff so I definitely encourage people to check that out. And also, you are able to get in North Hempstead a rain barrel and a composter. So that is, they are now available. Um, you're able to purchase the rain barrel and the composter at a discounted cost. Um, the town has them available for a discounted fee of $50 each, one uh, per household. You can pre-order it online or you can call 311. Um, you know, and I mean, I'm always so intrigued by this because composting is really just um, valuable for so many different things, you know, whether it's plant nutrients, reducing the amount of waste that you have, you know, and you don't realize it sometimes. And, and I, and it always brings to light when we've had these conversations on our show, you know, with different people, whether it's about recycling or what, and, you know, we just take for granted sometimes like, Oh, we're just throwing out the garbage. You know, you're not really thinking about where that garbage then goes, you know, what happens to that garbage. Um, so it's very interesting. Um, this whole composting. And the town also offers a lot of classes to talk about that as well. And you're able to get a rain barrel, which is, you know, just helps with irrigation and conserving water. So there's a lot of benefits. Call 311 for more information on that. And on that note, we are taking another break. This is Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We will be right back. <laughs> 
So I get this call from my grandma, and she's like, What's a podcast, and how much does it cost? So I tell her, podcasts are like radio shows, but you can download them on any device and listen to them anywhere at any time, and they're free. And then she says, I see, but where can you find good ones? And I'm like, go to wcwp.org slash podcast and check out the lineup of original shows or download any podcast app on your phone or tablet and search for LIU Studios. And she's all like, oh, that sounds easy. And then she asked me what an app is. LIU Studios Podcasts, available on any podcast app. You know, those little button things on your phone screen. Just ask your grandkids. And welcome back to Project Independence and You Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Otto, we are at our last segment, and I think we have covered just so many um, intense topics. We're, we're really just making everyone's life. We're giving you so much information to really digest this weekend, um, and it's all important good stuff. Uh, and in, in important good stuff... The Asian American Festival is going to be um, happening this year again, which is really excited. It's going to be Saturday, May 14th from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. over at North Hempstead Beach Park. I really recommend everyone goes to that. I actually have a scarf on. I don't know if you can see from there that I had picked up from a previous um, Asian American Festival. Um, There's cultural performance, a lively market filled with arts and crafts and shopping and of course, my favorite part, cuisine. Um, and there's it's all different Asian Americans. So it has Afghanistan, China, India, Japan, Korea, Pakistan, Philippines, all different representatives. Um, and, which is always going to make me laugh because this just makes me um, think of John, It's uh, the parking fee is $10 cash and the $7 for the credit card. Um, that is Asian American Festival on Saturday, May 14th, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. So, you know, that that one is one that I went to before, but because of COVID, it was uh, quite limited. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to go to that. I'm yeah, really it's such a beautiful. To- um, and I have to say, you know, the different events and programs at North Hempstead Beach Park are, um, are it's just such a great space for it. You know, over fall, I went to um, I forgot what it was called, but it was like a fall fest kind of thing. It was mostly like kid oriented. So I brought my nieces there. It was such a beautiful space. And there was a lot of people there, but at, there was no point that you felt, you know, oh my God, I can't breathe. You know, I'm, I'm like, there's just people everywhere. Like it was spaced out enough that you were able to kind of just enjoy it. Um, and I just think that's just such a great spot. And I encourage everyone to check it out because uh, there's going to be wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, my personal opinion is that uh, I think it's important to, you know, understand the Asian American different cultures, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, different countries. There's yeah. lots of differences within that. And uh, part of uh, any new immigration or group assimilating into society is on that side of the equation, mm-hmm. but also on our end of it, where you have to be accepting and try to learn uh, about their culture and how they live and you know, they're just like we are, you know. They, yeah, and it's just, um, it's just, I always think it's interesting to <clears throat> just see other people's cultures, you know, and I think like just especially to dive into it through the lens of, you know, entertainment. I mean, and there's these going to be beautiful performances and listen, food is the way to everyone's heart. And I think, you know, just sampling that and opening up and of course the little shops that they'll have, um, I think it's just it's just wonderful, and I love that the town is able to kind of go ahead, you know, with a full um, full force today. And and also going on right now at Clinton G. Martin Park is is the spring uh, fling for seniors. I saw them working very hard at community services setting up uh, that event. So it's nice, you know, to see a lot of these programs that couldn't happen um, to the same extent in previous years, you know, being able to happen, um, right now. So it's, um, when is that the spring spring fling? It's a, like a, just like a senior dance. That's a clinic. Yeah. When is it? It's right. It's actually happening as we speak. As we speak. Yes. So we're springing a uh, fling here or whatever. That's right. We <laughs> we're kicking off the spring fling for them. Um, and then just on another note, I, you know, I know we're in our last segment and I just wanted to, um, touch upon something a little sad, you know, uh, Jackie Schenkman, who was a longtime member of Project Independence, um, and anyone that knew her 
I think would all walk away saying the same thing that she was the fiercest advocator um, who advocated for her daughter and and just for you know senior rights and disability rights she is just um incredible and has certainly everyone anyone you say that name they know who jackie is um because she had that and and i had a nice personal you know relationship with her too and she uh just an incredible woman unfortunately she uh passed away um about two weeks ago um so i just want to send love to her family and her memory lives on in project independence um you know, we all could laugh thinking about things that we've been through with her. And she was a tough cookie. Um, but if she loved you, man, she loved you. And um, I just I, I like Jackie a lot. I, um, she was involved in uh, a lot of the early meetings that we had when we used to have like a radio yeah. a advisory committee thing. Yeah. And Jackie was there and uh, always uh, advocated for uh, her situation, which was a uh, a child who uh, has some disabilities, mm -hmm. who uh, she was concerned about what would happen uh, over the long haul. And the other one was uh, Jackie and I were on the show together um, with our grandchildren. And we had a very nice interaction. Uh, it was so great. Mm -hmm. It was just one of my mm -hmm. favorites. It was just yeah. the questions. Um, well, generation gap. and It was great. <laughs> it was so wonderful. And it was just... Uh, it was really special. It's, it's a moment that will always live on um, in me. And, you know, I'd say about Jackie, she was instrumental because she was doing the circle of support before PI developed a template of the circle of support, you know, and she was kind of our, you know, our case study about the success of it, you know, and the way she pulled different resources in and had that all laid out was um, just incredible. And I just, um, I can't say enough great things about her. So we will, she was missed dearly, um, but her memory forever will live on. Um, and I just want to give love to her family during this time. So just wanted to say that I, I didn't want the show to go on without that. Um, and then, you know, we're always talking, Otto, about different events that are coming up in the community. So Sid Jacobs and JCC just reached out to me and asked um, if I could promote this. And it's a great event that it's exciting they're able to do this again. It's a Care Day Symposium. Um, it's a whole bunch of different tools to build resilience for care partners and professionals, um, you know, obviously geared towards care to, caregivers. There's going to be um, talks on using a positive approach to dementia care, the power of collaboration, meeting the challenges of chronic care, COVID-19, um, and the impact on caring and coping. Um, and then there's going to be an inspiring story of strength. And there's a whole bunch of different vendors that will be there. Breakfast and lunch are included. It's $30 for caregivers and it is $40 for students and professionals. Um, but I really encourage people to check it out if you are in the area. It is at the Sid Jacobs and JCC over in East Hills um, from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And that um, is on, if I have the date here, it would be, I don't even see the date on our flyer. Oh, you have to register. Oh, it's on April 3rd on my birthday. Um, so you I have really a birthday? recommend my birthday <laughs> you know we need john ryan here to do uh the uh i miss his little the countdown the his countdown is, wow we're close baby we are <laughs> we're in the home stretch over here about 10 um, days that's right so uh, the magic everyone number mark, is that. 10. <laughs> <laughs> mark that on your calendars um but in all seriousness i recommend people if you are a caregiver or a professional dealing um in this realm to check that out because it's certainly important um also coming up over in in may we are bringing back a, a great program called watch your step fall prevention program you know we're always talking about fall prevention over at uh, project independence and this is a four session program that's going to be on wednesdays kicking off on may 4th at one o'clock at john cameron park which is at Albertson, which is a really great facility that we want people to um, check out because it is really lovely. And this is through the Project Independence nurses will be providing this um, and there'll be different speakers and just tips, tons of golden nuggets um, on just the importance of, um, you know, not falling. Uh, so you know, that I, is... I, I, I would like to reinforce the, mm -hmm. the idea of uh, not falling. Uh, I know two people now in the last two weeks who have fallen, uh -huh. um, one of which is in very bad shape, and the other one is not doing so great either. 
Uh, you know, it's a serious issue when you get older. Um, could be a variety of reasons. Of course. You could have fallen because you had a health problem mm -hmm. uh, and that caused you to fall. That's something you can't do much about. Uh, but then again, there are situations where you fall. Uh, we talk about mindful. I know myself, uh, you, you have to really pay attention yep. when you are walking up and down the stairs. You know, be mindful of what you're doing. Look around. Don't fall over a hassock or uh, a, a, a pet or yeah. whatever. Um, you know, it's... it's it, it, no, you're so right. I and mean, that's really the thing is that, you know, especially, you know, in, in older adults, because we dealt with it with my grandfather was falling like all the time when he was still alive. And it was such a cause for alarm um, because he had neuropathy. So, you know, that impacted even, you know, him feeling, feel you know, touching the ground, you know, because that's half the battle, right, is you put your feet on the ground, you have to feel your feet on the floor, you know, so you can kind of ground yourself in that. So when you lose that feeling, you know, you're losing that sense. So you're obviously more likely to fall. <clears throat> but I think it's so important with this, you know, being mindful, you know, and, and just paying attention, because that's when most of these falls occur, you know, it's, it's your, your run around, that's frankly, for anyone of any age, you know, it's, it's, you know, everyone's just trying to do things. But I think especially as you get older, you know, it's more difficult to kind of recover from, you know, these bounce back from these falls and stuff. So. That would be a topic, by the way. There's a lot more people have neuropathy than we realize, yeah. right? I, my wife has it. Mm -hmm. She knows other people. I, there's members of Project Independence mm -hmm. that we know of because of meetings and right. stuff that have it. Maybe we could get yeah, Somebody. you know what, Otto, I'm going to write that down because yeah. I think yeah. we're certainly... I mean, it wouldn't maybe just be neuropathy. But no, but in the fall prevention, even kind kinds of... of conditions, yeah. you know, neurology, which is uh, super complicated. <laughs> you know? It is. It's, it's one of the right... We were talking, we'll bring it back to our first segment. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> just the interconnected and how these different things, you know, all work. It's just, um, it's a confusing situation. Um, but I also just want to tell people that there's a lot of our social groups you can join. Um, uh, and there's some of them are virtual, some of them are in person. So you are able to kind of whatever your comfortability level is, call 311 or 516 869 6311, and you could uh, be connected just to any of these programs. And it's great when you call 312 on like the recording, you, they have little promotional things. And that's where a lot of people you know, hear about certain programs just from waiting on hold at 311, you are able to um, to kind of learn about what's going on. You don't uh, hear music? I, I, you know, I have to, I, there might be some music, but there's a lot, I know that they play those recordings because a lot of seniors will say to me, you know, I was on hold and I heard, you know, about the advisory or, or whatnot. Um, and speaking of the advisory, the next advisory committee meeting is on April 13th, which is a Wednesday. Um, at 10 o'clock over at Fushillo Park, which is in um, uh, Carl Place. So I definitely think people should um, should join. It's exciting. You can zoom in um, if you, you know, aren't comfortable or for some reason can't come, you know, in person. Um, but obviously we would love to have you in person because it was really nice um, two weeks ago, I guess it was now, to be able to um, kind of all be in person together. So um, that is it. And Otto, I know another topic that you are very interested in is the electric vehicles. That is going to be on Tuesday, April 12th at 2 p.m. at Clinton G. Martin Park. Um, there's going to be a whole panel discussion about the basics of electric vehicles. Um, a show and tell will even be there, which I'm super excited that I'll be at work that day and I can kind of see what's going on there. I'm, I'm going to go to that one. Yeah. Oh, great. So yeah. Otto, you can give us a whole recap yeah about the uh, about the show about like everything that goes into it so it's certainly something i think that's important um to learn more information about i think anyone that sees gas prices right now you know it could be leaning um towards that as well so i mean it's coming but i have my thoughts about why it can't be completely everywhere um at this moment in time yeah well i think it's important you know to learn about it and to see you know if it's right for you um and what the ins and outs are because i think there's some misconceptions about it and people are a little confused uh so it's just great i, I think it's wonderful that the town is having these different programs 
um, that you're able to kind of learn. Well, if you live stuff. in any kind of congested community um, with a lot of apartment houses, mm -hmm. houses, row houses, if you will, attached homes, mm -hmm. parking problems, uh, I'm not sure how this charging world will work until they have batteries that require hardly any charging. Uh, you know. Yeah, listen, and it's interesting. In Otto, you could ask all these questions and bring it back. You I'm were gone. Like, I have a list already. You're like our man on the streets. You can go yeah. and ask that and say you were a reporter, you know, for Project Independence and you and have to bring back the information because um, it's definitely something I think all of us, uh, I would love to learn more about. Well, it's, it's, to me, this is like the next wave of a major technology change mm -hmm. in, in uh, our country. It's like television, it's like the computer. Uh, cell phone, electric cars compared to gas cars. You got gas stations all over the place. I'm still, I told you, I'm still over here waiting for the flying cars. I really thought at this yeah. point we'd be in the Jetson flying car situation. And, so and when little... it also goes into the water. The, it I like flies that. Yeah. and it goes in the water. Right. I like that. Right. All, <laughs> all terrain, <laughs> different things. Um, yeah. but also, Otto, I have to tell you, which I know uh, we'll tell our public because I know you know because we just talked about it yesterday. Um, that our, one of our social workers is in the process of the Alexa installation for a 93-year-old uh, senior in Project Independence, um, which is really great, you know, and I think that um, it's going to connect her in wonderful ways. So it's exciting to, you know, see these little things for a 93-year-old, you know, it, it's just absolutely incredible. So Well, there's another wave of technology really is voice activated yep. and what the, the, dr oberfeld was talking about um s s devices that can sense mm -hmm. if you fell uh incredible reach out to emergencies places for you uh, yeah. you know all kinds of great technology coming along there's a whole new and it's amazing you know wave. because you know it's we always think of these things you know listen i've been with project independence for a very long time you know and it was a time when there was just the you know, little PERS devices that if you fell would go off, you know. So now they have just things that are just so um, tiny and, and interconnected to different things. But we will all, you will hear it first, any updates on anything. Otto, what a show we've had today. Thank you so much for co-hosting with me. A shout out to Dan Cox over at WCWP. And for everyone that's listening, tune in next week to Project Independence and You Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org.